Hitboxes and hurtboxes determine the attack properties and attack and damage received in Smack Studio. So what is the difference between a hitbox and a hurtbox? Well, a hurtbox represents the blue area of your character where you're basically vulnerable. So let's go back to idle for a second. So this blue box here represents all the areas where you can be hit. And a hitbox represents an attack and the damage that attack might do. Let's use this side A for example. You see that when this foot comes out, this red box appears. So let's add a hitbox and a hurtbox to a move like this, say this up B. This up B is the kind of third jump of this character. And they go up in the air. Pretty much for every animation, maybe except for like a victory animation or something, you want a hurtbox. If you do not add a hurtbox by hitting, you know, making sure you have a hurtbox timeline, essentially your character is invincible and you don't really want that to happen. So if I click uh, new hitbox here, it also generates a hurt box, by the way. Um, I'm going to click and drag this, and you'll want to size it to it's roughly about the size of your character, uh, maybe something like this. You'll have to experiment to get just the right size, but what I would recommend is if you have kind of a neutral start like this, you can go back to one you've already made, hit Control c to copy, and reuse that as often as it makes sense. So I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to use this one here, but... Uh, what you'll notice is later in this animation, he crouches and falls. So at that point in time, you're going to want to make changes. So the way that I like to do that is I like uh, making sure I have I have clicked new to generate a new one, and I'm actually going to adjust this this hurt box to be more appropriate for the moment in time. So it's going to start off with this size, as he pretty much doesn't change too much. But then as soon as he starts crouching, it does change. So maybe. Maybe I'll just change it a little bit here as well. Maybe make it even easier. I could copy this keyframe and paste it, and then I have this to work off of and just make subtle adjustments with something that I've already made. And maybe maybe that's, you know, something like this is a fair representation. You don't need to be too specific. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just something that works. So now you'll notice when it goes through this animation, the blue surrounding him changes depending on where he is and visual you want to make something that's visually consistent if someone if somebody attacks maybe like the very last pixel of his arm no one's going to notice if it doesn't count but you know try to be reasonable with those hurt boxes next we're going to add some actual hit boxes and that's going to be this attack so you can see his arm goes up in the air like this and i think the minute that it goes up i'm going to want to add a hurt box so here it's not going to do anything but here's the moment it's going to start to do some damage so let's create a new timeline that's hurt boxes and we're going to call this i uh, sorry not hurt boxes hit boxes i'm getting confused myself going to create a new one called hit boxes going to make sure we select that and then we're going to create new and for this maybe you'll do something like this uh by the way you're not going to want it to be perfectly like for example you don't want something like this that move is going to be incredibly difficult to use and it's going to be very bad so for most moves, you want to be pretty generous in the size of the, the attack. So something like this might be appropriate. And when it comes to the damage that it does and the, the base knockback and the knockback scaling, the way that it works is it, you know, it gives you some reference here if you hover over. For example, a standard tilt attack might be anywhere between 5 and 10. Maybe a standard strong attack is between 10 and 15. And special attack, this is a special attack, that can really go... A bunch of different ways so for simplicity's sake let's say this is a, a, a base damage of 10 and the base knockback again there's some standards here 5 to 10 is some base knockback we'll, we'll go with 10 again because this is a special and then for knockback scaling you'll want to make a determination because the actual calculation the formula for determining knockback is the base knockback so what this would be plus the damage times knockback scaling which is, in this case, this is the damage and this is the knockback. So another example might be, if you want it to be a little bit less powerful, you might do a 0 0.05 knockback scaling. If you want something a little bit stronger, you want something like 0 0.1 knockback scaling. And that will determine kind of like how the hit goes. And you can experiment with this as well. I definitely encourage you to. Another thing you should keep in mind is this launch angle. When you, when you hit the player, what direction do they go? So in this case... I like the idea of this upward punch, maybe going at a, maybe a little bit less than a 90 degree angle. So maybe let's say an 80, 80 degree angle. That's still pretty 
they're getting knocked in the air upwards, but not perfectly straight up. And then of course you have the hit sound option. So let's look for one like, I don't know, let's look for punch heavy. What does that sound like? All right, that sounds pretty good. Maybe we'll leave it as is. And then you can select a punch hit effect also. So let's see, hit light, what does that look like? All right, that looks pretty good. Let's do hit medium. All right, let's use hit medium. And you have various properties here, which you know you can experiment with on your own. We won't be covering in this, but this will give you a quick idea of what effects you can do. So how the question is, how long should this hitbox be active? At a certain point, you don't want it active all the time because that's a little cheap. So what I think I'll do is I'll probably stop it right around here. I'm going to right click and hit new empty keyframe, and that's going to turn off that hitbox. But uh, also, it moves a little bit, so I'm going to want to move... I'm going to click, I'm actually going to copy this keyframe and then paste it right here so that I can move it in a point in time and it doesn't move everything else before it. I'm going to move this a little bit and I think initially I'm going to actually set it so that it does something like 8 damage and maybe the base knockback is 7, so a bit weaker. But then when it gets to that full hit, we go on the full 10. And so not only have I changed the position of this hitbox, but I've changed the properties of it so it's literally weaker here and stronger here. And then after that initial punching period, we'll probably go back to something slightly weaker. Maybe I'll do this and I'll adjust the hitbox slightly. And that seems pretty fair. Maybe I'll even end it a bit sooner because this seems like a pretty long time for it to be active. So anyway, this is what the move looks like. There's that punch and then it goes away. So let's save and see what it looks like in game. Okay, so let's try that up B. Alright, look at that. We got a punch out of it. So that is knocking the character up the way we expect. Notice how Grand Bag goes up in the air a little bit, but not completely up, a little bit forward. That's the 80 degrees that we set. And it looks like, it looks pretty fair, from what I can tell. So not bad. Uh, and keep in mind that you'll have to mess around with the hitboxes as well. I'm technically vulnerable, but because Grand Bag is pretty defenseless and isn't able to defend himself, we don't actually know if it's fair or not, but if you try to upload a character to the workshop, you will be stopped if, you know, some of your moves don't have any hurt boxes at all. You might actually purposefully cut out hurt boxes, like let's say for example I want to do this, and for this period of time I actually want my character to be invincible, and then maybe I want it to come back here. That's okay, it depends on the kind of move you're doing, but you don't want to have a character that has no hurt boxes, because essentially that means that they are invincible, and you that's no fun. So uh, you want to balance your character to be have a variety of hurt boxes that match the character's outline and general frame. And then you want hit boxes that roughly match the attack and are something that the opponent would expect to see. Something else to mention is that you can actually do actions based on if the attack hits or not. So here it says the actions on this list will fire exactly once at the time the collision starts. So what's an example of that? Well, let's say that when he punched, we actually want him to heal himself. Well, we can't really demonstrate that, so I won't do that one. How about we say, if you if you hit the person, we're going to flip you in the other direction. There's no practical reason for doing this, but I just want to demonstrate kind of how this works. So let's, So in other words, if I use my up B and I don't hit anybody, I won't flip my direction. But if I do hit someone, I should flip my direction. Let's see if it works. Look at that. I As soon as I hit Grand Bag, I change my direction. So what that means is you can do things that are conditional based upon whether or not you make contact with someone. And I can give you an example of that now. All right, so here we have Kyan, and I think his side B does a really good job of showcasing what happens when you make contact with someone. So first, let's just demonstrate what happens in game. All right, so here we have uh, Kyan, and if I use the side B and there's no one there, nothing really happens. He just kind of dashes forward and nothing really happens. But if he makes contact, he goes into a little combo, and that only happens when he makes contact. If, see, I missed him there. I missed him again. But if I reach him, that happens. So that's an example of you know, actions firing based on whether or not you made contact. So if I click this, you can see here, what does it do? When the attack hits someone, well, it's going to set the movement velocity to zero, meaning you'll kind of stay in place. And the extra velocity is also zero, so any extra momentum is going to be zero. And then lastly, 
you're going to jump to a certain animation or fr frame in this animation, which happens to be 50. Well, what's 50? It's these series of attacks, which have their own properties. So pretty ingenious way to make use of that feature. I hope that you're able to understand hitboxes and hurtboxes and make fantastic, fun characters.